Ted Nugent and Kyle Rittenhouse apparently had a sit down with each other March 31st, 2023. And oh my God, dude, did it get crazy. If you don't know Ted Nugent, he was a famous guitar player back in the day, I think the 1970s or something. Supposedly, he knows how to shred a guitar. By the by, I love the guitar. I love it. So, mad respect for being able to shred a guitar, but this guy is a conspiracy theorist, the likes of which you, I would be willing to bet, you've never seen before. Some of the conspiracies that this guy puts out are unhinged from reality. Oh my God, they are crazy. And some of them are so crazy, what, what he's about to lay out for us here, that his little co-host here, his little buddy, Kyle Rittenhouse, hasn't even heard him and is completely blown away by them. So let's listen to this conversation. It's just like a minute long. Listen to what Ted Nugent, this bastion of the right, this right-wing conspiracy theorist, like far-right conspiracy theorist figure, has to say to his little buddy, his little murderer buddy, Kyle Rittenhouse here. Quick cutaway, we'll get back to it in a second. Just quick reminder, the YouTube algorithm operates off of a few factors. It pushes a video further if you watch it to the very end, if you like the video, and if you subscribe. If possible, I would appreciate it if you guys watched my videos to the very end at least. If you start one, make it to the end. All right, sorry for the interjection. Let's continue. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing okay right now. I'm just a little upset with what I'm seeing right now going on in this world. Because what they're doing to Trump is another example. What they did to Jacob Chansley when it's on film. Jacob Chansley, by the way, is the uh, QAnon shaman. Tucker, just for context, if you're watching this five years in the future, he's about to mention it. Tucker Carlson aired some January 6th footage. There were police inside that like inside the Capitol that had no idea what was going on on the outside. And Jacob Chansley, the QAnon shaman and others walked in like older people just dressed normal, you know, kind of bigger people, overweight, old, say 70 years old, just kind of waltzed in and they were kind of mosey in their way around. And some cops found them and walked with them. Basically, it was a result of, first of all, the cops not having any idea what was really going on. And second, recognizing that these people were not necessarily a threat, specifically the older people and uh, trying to keep them occupied. He's trying to keep Jacob Chansley occupied. Didn't, um, you know, the QAnon shaman, the QAnon shaman, though, eventually it, it didn't matter. Like he separated from the cops and he got into all kinds of shenaniganery, which is why he's facing down some serious jail time at the moment. So anyway, with that added context, let's give this a listen. What they did to Jacob Chansley when it's on film that the police welcomed him into the Capitol. If no, they didn't welcome him in. They he forced they broke a window to get in. OK, and they climbed through the window once he was inside. They walked with him, the police did, that were already inside. That's very different. There are plenty of explanations. Maybe they were just trying to make sure he didn't get into any trouble. You know, you're less likely to break a law if there's a police officer walking alongside you. So that's just one more conspiracy theory from Ted Nugent. Police welcomed him into the Capitol. If the police welcome you into a building. That did not happen. They busted a window and they forced their way in. Who could possibly charge you with trespassing? Well, I mean, you can say that all you want, but they were charged with trespassing and a whole bunch of stuff. Seditious conspiracy. I mean, they were charged with a bunch of stuff. They got into serious trouble. And this guy is like smiling like he got one over on him, like he figured out what the loophole is and now they all have to be let out of jail. No, they're going to be in jail for about 20 years, a lot of these people, so... Sorry, you didn't win this argument, and you're not arguing with a judge anyways, and even if you were, you would lose. And then I just, I see this going on with Trump, and I'm just like, I can relate in a way. I see this sure. political prosecution. I think he means persecution. It's just, it's upsetting because they're doing this to a president. A, former, a good man. A good person. Who can honestly look at Donald Trump and think to themselves, a good man? Really? Isn't Donald Trump famous for being a scumbag? He'll 
do whatever it takes to get what he wants and, and get everything out of everybody and take advantage of people and everything else. Isn't he famous for that? Isn't he famous for like firing people just for the hell of it because he doesn't like them? Isn't he famous for claiming he'll hire the best people and then hiring literally the worst people? What are you talking about? A good man. E even this guy can't believe that. Well, you know, I went through this anti-justice system at the hands of Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Oh, boy. Here comes a conspiracy. You punk. You horrible, anti-American, communist, Islamic terrorist. Okay. Uh, Obama is a Christian, to my knowledge. Not an Islamic terrorist, but all right, go on. Terrorist. Well, that's going to go in the media. That's what he was. He God, he thinks he's more important than he is. That's going to go in the media. That's what he was. He literally reignited racism in America. Thanks a lot, Barack, and your buddy Mike. Okay, now, it, now we're getting into conspiracy lane. You know, this is really sad. I haven't explained the conspiracy yet. He hasn't either. He's about to, but this is really heartbreaking, man that he does this. So who is this buddy Mike of his? Your two fake daughters. And if you if I'm wrong, somebody show me a picture of Mike Obama pregnant. The claim is Michelle Obama, Barack's wife, is really a man. She's a, a trans man. And her real name is Mike. And she was never pregnant, and they're not their real kids. They're just... Some rando, I, I guess, adopted or something. I don't know. How sad is that, dude? How deeply sad is it for somebody like Ted Nugent to repeat a conspiracy theory that your genuinely assigned female at birth wife is really a man and come up with a name for her even, Mike? It, it's heartbreaking. I feel so bad for... Obama and for Michelle that they have to go through this kind of thing. Can you imagine yourself? Just put yourself in these shoes for a minute. Imagine somebody like this guy looking at you and saying and calling you Mike. If you're a woman, imagine you, you know, you're the women in the audience. Imagine you're sitting here listening to Ted Nugent as one of the women in the audience and Ted Nugent calls you Mike it says you're really a man secretly when you're not imagine how that shit feels if you're a dude imagine this guy calling you Michelle and saying you're really a trans person you've been trans all along and it's a secret and you're trying to cover it up and all of that imagine that how heartbreaking is that how sad is that how how wrong is that is there no moral bottom to these people? Is there no, like, thing that they're not willing to do because it's too evil, because it's too immoral? Is there something that they won't do? I mean, th this is just disgusting, honestly. For the record, Michelle Obama is a woman, always was a woman, and doesn't owe you anything. And what are their kids' names? Malia and... I don't even remember Obama's kids' names. Hang on. Let me look. Sasha and Malia. Sasha and Malia are their kids' names. For the record, Sasha and Malia are their kids. They're their real kids. Barack Obama married Michelle and they had children together. Now, how disgusting of a human being do you have to be to come up with a conspiracy theory like this? Somebody came up with this. And then this guy right here repeated it and bought into it and liked it, thought it was on point, thought it was a great conspiracy, thought it was totally true, said it to as many people as he possibly could, said it on Real America's Voice. This is not a small program, has millions of viewers. Does it get more morally depraved than that, than referring to a woman as a man who genuinely is a woman that's just disgusting now listen to the conspiracy again and watch kyle rittenhouse's face here because he hasn't heard this conspiracy theory 
and he doesn't know quite what to think about it. It's kind of amusing, actually, to watch how he reacts. And your two fake daughters. And if you if I'm wrong, somebody show me a picture of Mike Obama pregnant. They don't owe you anything. Michelle Obama doesn't owe you a single thing. And speaking from personal experience, as somebody who is a Z-list celebrity in some circles, when somebody accuses you of some crazy shit like this, it's better to not feed into it, to not even acknowledge it, and certainly not to put out more information, right? Like Obama was accused of not being born in the United States. They wanted to see the birth certificate. Trump led the charge on this. So you know what? Obama fed into it and released his birth certificate. That was mistake number one. Shouldn't have bothered. What did they do next? They said, we want a long form birth certificate. We want the other birth certificate. And that's where he drew the line. He's like, you know what? You have my birth certificate. Okay, I'm done. You don't need a long form birth certificate. He even gave them the announcement in the newspaper that he was born. And Donald Trump wouldn't accept that. He continued to double and triple and quadruple down on this claim that he was born in Kenya and he's a Muslim and he's secretly trying to take it. You know, this is the same kind of thing. Don't give it to him. Don't give it to them. If you give them anything, it will be used against you and they're going to move the goalposts to something else. You show a picture of Michelle Obama pregnant with those kids or you show those kids when they're young or something, they're going to move the goalpost and they're going to use those pictures that you've provided them against you. They're going to come up with some way to attack you with those pictures. They're going to say, oh, that's fake. That baby bump that she's got, or I'm sorry, that he's got, they just stuffed a pillow under there. This picture doesn't even look old this looks like a brand new picture that they just kind of scratched up and scraped up and made it look old and put on a filter and then they're going to demand a new type of proof they're going to move the goalpost that's how this works don't give them an inch here's the thing about these types of conspiracy theories the burden of proof is on you ted nugent the burden of proof is on you you made the claim you have to prove that it's true. If you believe that Michelle Obama is really Mike Obama, prove it. Otherwise, we have no reason to believe you. So anyway, like I was saying, watch old Kyle Rittenhouse's face as he explains this conspiracy theory. This disgusting, evil, morally depraved conspiracy theory with simply no evidence to it. A lot, Barack, and your buddy Mike and your two fake daughters. And if you, if I... Dude, his eyes got big. Rittenhouse's eyes got big when he when he said Mike. <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> this kid's like, what the hell is happening right now? And your buddy Mike, and your two fake daughters. And if you, if I'm wrong, somebody show me a picture of Mike Obama pregnant. Show me a picture of Mike Obama pregnant, and show me the two daughters in their youth. Dude, Rittenhouse's eyes are the size of dinner plates right now, okay? And, and <laughs> God, it's funny, dude. It's funny to hear somebody say the absolute craziest imaginable, the most unhinged on planet Earth. And this guy have absolutely no idea what's being said. <laughs> like, he has no idea what's going on, but he's primed to believe Ted Nugent because he's buddies with him. He likes him. They like each other. So whatever he says, he's probably going to believe. Oh, God. It's so funny to see his reaction to this conspiracy, though. Oh, my God. ...in their youth. Show me Mike and Barack snuggling their infants in, in swaddling clothes. Those pictures don't exist because his, his wife is Mike. Did you know that? I, I did not. And the daughters aren't theirs. Well, that's a conspiracy theory. Prove me wrong. Well, like I said, the burden of proof is on you to prove you right. It's not on anyone else to prove you wrong, first of all. And second, you give them an inch and they're going to move the goalpost and use what you gave them against you. Obama gave people or gave the press his birth certificate. 
and then they used it against him in one way or another and said, well, that one's not good enough. We need a different one. He said, okay, well, you know what? I'm not giving you that one. I'll give you the birth announcement in the newspaper. That's not even good enough. Nothing's good enough. In the end, nothing is good enough. And in addition to all of that, if it was proven, if hypothetically, Michelle and Barack Obama did give Ted Nugent these pictures that he's requesting, you know what would happen? Nothing. Radio silence. They wouldn't say a word moving forward. Ted Nugent wouldn't come out, do a public apology tour, say, you know what? I apologize. I was wrong. Michelle Obama really is a woman, always was a woman. They really are their kids. No, he wouldn't say a word. So either Obama gives him more ammunition to use against him and continues the conspiracy theory, or he lets the conspiracy theory peter out on its own. So I I don't even know if Michelle Obama and Barack are aware that Ted Nugent's running around making this claim. I know Michelle Obama is probably aware that people claim that she's a man. If that's got to hurt, I would never run for public office because of shit like that. That that has got that's that's got to put you in a dark place right there. Imagine that. Imagine being called a man when you're not. Imagine being accused of being a man when you're not just disgusting. So the point is the whole thing is nonsense and Obama has an option either feed into the conspiracy and at best Ted Nugent is just going to shut his mouth and move on with his life. And at worst, he's going to use it against him. He's going to take what he gives him and he's going to display it to everybody and make a media spectacle and claim that this is fake and that's fake and they made this fake and that and blah, blah, blah. Or Obama can just ignore it completely, not say a word, and the conspiracy will peter out on its own anyways. So, again, I say, Prove me wrong! No one needs to prove you wrong. You need to prove you right. That's how this works. Anyway... The reason I played that video is because I got a voicemail that refers to it. So let's listen to the voicemail, see what they had to say here. Hey, Owen. Guy Young, Brookfield, Illinois. I just caught a a clip on uh, the majority report where uh, Ted Nugent and uh, Kyle Rittenhouse are talking back and forth with with each other. Yeah, the majority report played that. I had to go digging for the archives. I couldn't find the original. So I had to go all the way to the RSBN website and go to the hour-long clip and find that. Like, you don't know how much work I put into finding that clip for you, guy, okay? You have no idea how hard I worked for that. I hope you appreciate it. (laughs) Okay, let's keep listening. It reminds me of that scene in Clash of the Titans with the Stygian witches where they pass the one eye around to each other so they can see. These two guys are swapping their one IQ point back and forth so they can uh, mumble, and then while the other one sits like you and nods his head. God, they're they're just embarrassing people. <clears throat> R.I.P. T.O.P. 2026. Anyway, yeah, I appreciate the, the voicemail. Yeah, it, it was really interesting. It was a good opportunity to talk about this clip, too. What an absurd thing to say, right? I mean, this happened all the way back in March t- uh, 31st, 2023. And uh, I guess the majority report discovered it not too long ago. So I went back in the archives and I found the original and recorded it myself. And uh, it was worth a watch. It was worth a watch to just kind of talk about, like, the logic of the situation. Anyway, yeah, thank you, uh, Guy Young, for the voicemail. I appreciate that. If you're watching this five years in the future, Steven Crowder is in some hot water right now. He's burned every bridge that he has with the uh, conservative community, with the conservative pundit community or commentator community basically nobody likes him the daily wire is i think the largest independent conservative media uh organization out there and he started a war with them genius right so i decided to start watching some of steven crowder's stuff see what he had to say and wow dude this guy says some absolutely depraved stuff I wanted to show you something that I found absolutely disgusting. And as a matter of fact, a caller 
found absolutely disgusting too. We're going to listen to the phone call somebody had about this clip in a minute. But let's listen to this clip from Steven Crowder, April 26, 2023. He's about to tell us about a new Barbie doll that Mattel is making for kids that have Down syndrome. Okay, It's not really different from any other Barbie in any way, pretty much. It's just labeled as the Down syndrome Barbie to make kids that have Down syndrome feel better about themselves. You know, these kids already have a hard life. And to know that they have a doll that has similar experiences to them mentally is probably comforting. For them, and, and, and I don't see anything wrong with it. I think that's nice. I think it was a, a nice thing, a good thing, that Mattel decided to do a Down Syndrome Barbie. That's a, a nice thing. Well, Steven Crowder disagrees. Listen to his take on this. April 26, 2023. This is real. They just announced uh, the release. I feel bad even saying it. I... Down Syndrome Barbie. Yes. The world's first Barbie with Down syndrome will give children the opportunity to play with more inclusive dolls. You can hear him snickering and laughing in the background, right? Like, this is hilarious. This Barbie has Down syndrome, and that's just funny for some reason. I don't know why exactly, but it must be funny because they're snickering. This doll is breaking <laughs> barriers by creating the first fashion doll yeah, with, with hard strength. Is this real? Allowing more children. Yeah, I, I muted some words. Um... I don't know, like, I'm not offended by much. I'm not offended by that word personally at all, the R word for people who have mental disabilities. I'm not offended by it. It's just not something that I would say, not something that I would advocate other people would say. I think that these people are just scumbags for putting it out there. Like, I'm not insulting anybody, not trying to insult anybody. I'm just, I'm trying to make it clear that these people have a scumbag personality and that they're proud of that. Again, really, this isn't an insult. This is just an honest analysis of who these people are. They're scumbags, and they revel in it. So anyways, yeah, I muted any mention of the R word in reference to people with mental disabilities for anybody who may be sensitive to that stuff. This doll is breaking <laughs> barriers by creating the first fashion doll yeah, with, with hard strength. There you go. There, that's where I muted it. Is this real? Allowing more children to project their future through fashion doll play and imagine what is possible. Mattel, Barbie's parent company, announced the oh, new no. figures will soon be hitting store <laughs> oh, shelves. No. Look, it's just a nice thing to help kids who are dealing with a tough situation feel a little bit less alone in the world. It's a nice thing to help kids feel a little bit better about their situation. Why do people like this want to make fun of people with Down syndrome? What, what is their end goal there? Like, honestly, it, it's not funny. It's supposed to be a comedy bit. It's supposed to be a comedy show, right? What they just did, they laughed all, all the way through it. It wasn't funny. It wasn't funny funny at all they didn't tell a joke there was no punchline there was no amusing anything about it there's just like a barbie doll designed to make kids with mental conditions feel a little bit less alone what's what's funny the the joke is he's a scumbag that's the joke now steven crowder was recently found out to be a wife abuser what blows me away about that, about that fact that he was found out as a wife abuser, isn't the fact that he abuses his wife verbally, for the record. We haven't seen, we haven't actually seen video of him hitting her, but I believe that he does that too because I, I've been hit by my dad and I know exactly how people react when they're hit by the people that they're supposed to trust. And his wife reacted the same way that I reacted my whole life. So as I was saying, he was outed as a wife abuser recently. And the thing that blew me away about that isn't that he was outed as an abuser. It's that people were surprised that that's who he is, that he would do something like that. 
Like, what? Really? The guy sat there laughing through an advertisement for a Barbie doll for kids with Down syndrome. You really didn't expect somebody on this moral level to be a wife abuser? Really? I'm surprised that you're surprised. So anyways, he gets worse. He gets super racist with it and starts making fun of black people, of course. Not just Down syndrome people, but black people. But, um, and then, you know, they make more and more jokes about all of it. And, uh, let, you know what, let's skip the, the part about making fun of black people because it's a complicated joke that I don't feel like explaining at the moment. So we've established he likes making fun of people with Down syndrome and he likes making fun of black people at any cost. And he likes abusing his wife. Okay, we've established those things about Steven Crowder. Again, I did a whole breakdown about Steven Crowder, including the wife abuse stuff on my Fireside Chat, Telltale Fireside Chat YouTube channel, if you wanna watch it. It is the entire drama explained, so you can just look that up if you're curious. But keep listening to him make fun of kids with Down syndrome. Down syndrome Barbie. Short bus, not included. Did she have to oh, say? <laughs> did she have to say smash through barriers when we all know about special needs strength? Yeah. I mean, for I, crying I, out loud. I, I, <laughs> why is did you? Say, why is the guy on the left here laughing? That wasn't a funny joke at all. It, it's not that it was offensive to me. I'm offended by nothing. Okay, I used to say I used to tell dead baby jokes. There is nothing on planet Earth that can offend me. I just don't find this funny at all. Like, I think this is dumb as dog shit. And I don't see why anybody is laughing here. Some ex-employees at Steven Crowder's show spoke out about what it was like there, and apparently he has a little button under his desk that he hits when he wants Gerald to shut up. Uh, he has a bunch of rules about how he should have the last word and that everybody should always laugh at everything he says. He has his whole setup about how his show is supposed to run. Is this guy laughing because that's like part of the deal? Because what Steven Crowder just said wasn't funny. It was just mean. Like there was nothing funny about it. <laughs> I, I looked at the Barbie and I'm like, she, how, she doesn't look that how, downsy. That, exactly. That's my whole point. It looks how like Amy you know? Schumer. This is the Down syndrome yeah, Barbie, and it's, it's like, this, here, yeah. another Barbie to sell? Like, I feel like I'm being taken advantage now of. Now with more retard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's not like I'm not offended by this. It's just not funny. There's just nothing funny about it, right? He, he's just a scumbag, and he revels in it. Honestly, was anybody surprised when we found out that he's abusive to his wife? If you were surprised by that, you weren't paying attention. That's who he is. That's his whole bit. Being abusive to people. Making fun of people. Be bullying people. Even kids with Down syndrome. No one is off the table with this guy. So I got a voicemail about that whole thing that Steven Crowder did. I want to listen to the voicemail and uh, hear what this person had to say. Hear their take on the whole thing. Hey, Owen, this is Sid from Illinois. I just got done watching your video where Steven Crowder makes fun of the Down syndrome doll, and you asked what their slippery slope was, and... Yeah, so when I originally covered this, Steven Crowder said that he's upset that they are that they created a Down syndrome doll because it promotes diversity and he doesn't want diversity. And I wonder, is there a slippery slope? Does he think that this is like going somewhere? Like if they allow this, then, you know, cats are going to marry dogs and it'll be anarchy or something like what's the slippery slope? Why is he so upset over a Down syndrome Barbie doll? Really? You know, the slippery slope to having a gay Ken doll would be normalizing kids becoming gay later in life. That that would that's an example of like a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope I stand for. I would like to see a gay Ken doll. A couple of you know Ken and Ben, maybe. A couple of 
dolls get together instead of Barbie and Ken, you got Ken and Ben, right? And uh, they get married and they have a little house together and everything. That'd be fantastic. And then the kids that play with these dolls feel a little more comfortable coming out of the closet, right? That would be a slippery slope, quote unquote. What's the slippery slope to the, like the Down syndrome doll? What's he afraid of happening if this Down syndrome Barbie comes out? Is he afraid of what? That Down syndrome people will like people will be more likely to be to or to have Down syndrome? What? What's the slippery slope here? I don't know. There is none. His whole thing is being abusive to the people around him. That's it. Sorry to interrupt. Let's keep listening here to the uh, voicemail. Hey, Owen. This is Sid from Illinois. I just got done watching your video where Steven Crowder makes fun of the Down Syndrome doll, and you asked what their slippery slope was. And as a disabled person, I can confidently say that people like Steven Crowder make fun of those dolls because they don't think disabled people deserve to have good lives. Um, I feel justified in saying Steven Crowder probably believes that um, people with Down syndrome should not be alive. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate the voicemail, and I know that 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 was not easy to say, but I think you might be right. I mean, he made a joke, if you notice, just a few minutes before Uh, I mean, I skipped the joke, but he made a joke about sickle cell Barbie. That was a racist joke that uh, I'm sure a lot of people already understand. I explained it in my whole breakdown of the Steven Crowder drama. I'm not going to bother explaining it again now, but like, I think you're right. I think what Steven Crowder wants is white kids with white families, Christian families, cis, straight Everything completely heteronormative in every way. As a matter of fact, you know, the guy wrote a book, and I actually read the book on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. The book's called Beautiful Differences. You want to see what kind of beautiful differences Steven Crowder thinks about or talks about or looks for? Look at the cover. What differences do you see here? Blonde hair, blue eye kids. Let's just scroll through the book a little bit. I mean, again, I I went through this book on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. You want to read the whole thing? Go there and read it with me. What beautiful differences are we looking at in this uh in on this page here in this illustration? Blonde hair, blue eyes. The only difference I see is the guy has brown hair. That's it. What about these people? Red hair. That's it. Red hair. Red hair, brown hair, blonde hair. The beautiful differences we're looking at are different colors of hair, seemingly. He wants a straight, white, cis, Christian nation, seemingly. And if you don't fall into that very specific set of categories, then you don't belong here. That's the way Steven Crowder seems to view the world. It's simply disgusting. Hey, Ellen, uh, Lou from Missouri here. Was just kind of curious on your, your take. I know it's morally reprehensible in God's eyes for me to defend myself when the Christians come to kill me because I'm gay. What do you think they're actually expecting us to do in response That's a good question, an interesting question. Um, Here's the answer. There are a lot of groups out there, like, for example, Patriot Front, who made the headlines recently. Now, Patriot Front is a a branch off of the Nazi group that protested in Charlottesville in, I don't, 2017? I don't remember exactly when they did. Uh, They split off from that group and then did a hostile takeover, basically. It was called... Patriot Vanguard, I think, or something to that effect. Well, Patriot Front, these guys right here, this these people are actually forming an army currently right now as we speak. 
and the army the the intent of having the army is to enact what they want the US to look like. You know, there was something called the Rwandan genocide. It was two tribes pitted against each other, the Hutu and the um oh my god, what were the two tribes? Yeah, I'm sorry. The Hutu and the Tutsi tribes. They're effectively the same. There's really no difference, right? The Hutu were the oppressed minority, although there were more of them. There, you know, they made up like ninety percent of Rwanda. But the Tutsi were slightly taller, slightly lighter skinned. So when Britain came and made it a colony, Rwanda, they put the Tutsi in charge because they looked a little more European. And the Hutu didn't like being an oppressed minority, and eventually committed genocide against them. There were government records created by the British that listed the tribes that the people were from and their addresses and everything. And after the genocide took place or or in the middle of the genocide or when things were starting to calm down, basically, the Tutsi had regrouped outside of Rwanda, gotten together and created a group called the Rwandan Patriots Front. And they swept through Rwanda and kind of took control of everything and stopped the fighting, stopped the genocide, so on and so forth, and then took control of the government and and kind of tried to set everything right or whatever. That's what Patriot Front is trying to do right now. They're trying to set up an army. And they do demonstrations like this regularly. This is at DC. Now, Unicorn Riot is a group that got their hands on some leaked material. This is leaked footage of Patriot Front actually training for war with shields and everything. So I'll tell you what they expect you to do when the time comes. They expect you to be incapable of defending yourself. They expect you to be worse trained than they are because groups like this train every single day like we just saw. Like there's a bunch of footage out there of these people, you know, holding shields and running around and wearing knee pads and the whole nine yards and all of it. They're training for war. The people on the right, some of them, they intend to sweep through the United States and take out everybody that they don't like. Only problem with that equation is that the gay community and the black community and other minorities very well, uh, I would say they vastly, oh, and allies too, they vastly outnumber those nutcases like Patriot Front or like the MAGA extremists who are willing to go to war to get what they want done or whatever. They... We vastly outnumber these people, and no amount of training is going to save them if they come after us or, you know, as allies or as the gay community. So I think what they expect is that they're like masters of the universe, and they know what they're doing, and they're well-trained, and they're soldiers, and blah, blah, blah. And the reality is a bullet doesn't care how well-trained you are with a shield like that. So I think they're expecting you not to fight back. Unfortunately for them, people are going to fight back, and lots and lots and lots of people like this are going to lose their lives. I don't want bloodshed on either side. I am a pacifist, okay? As pacifist as it gets, I believe in violence only in self-defense. But these people want war, I will be prepared to defend myself 
and my fellow man, my allies, the LGBT community, the black community, any minorities out there, I'll be prepared to defend them. Being a pacifist or not, whether I'm a pacifist or not, somebody puts an AR-15 in my hand and we are being attacked, I will defend my brethren. We'll put it that way. I will defend who I need to defend if I am being attacked and if I am called to fight for people's lives, I will do it. That's something that these people probably haven't accounted for. Anyway, thank you, Lou. I appreciate the phone call. I wouldn't sweat it. They're just, they're not thinking things through. They think that they're tough guys that are just going to walk in and whatever happens, happens. They're just going to be able to waltz in and take people out at will. It's not going to work that way. They're not going to have the ability to take control of anything. They're not going to have the ability to take anybody out. They're going to lose, and they're going to lose miserably. So I wouldn't sweat it. I mean, you have an ally in me, and you have an ally in a lot more people than just that. So they expect you to be weak, but when people's lives are at risk, it doesn't matter how weak they are. They will fight like a rabid dog to protect themselves and the people around them. Anyway, thank you for the voicemail, Lou. I appreciate it.